Okay, here we're going to look at how we prepare a consolidated statement of cash flows. And let's go look at our example here. Corp P, the parent is going to purchase 80% here of Corporation S, the subsidiary. And they're going to make a cash payment to Corporation S for $310,000. And they're also going to issue stock here to Corporation S uh, for a value here of $180,000. So the total amount of this uh, investment here is $490,000. So going down here, doing our arithmetic uh, with Corp B, buying 80% here for 490,000 divide that 490,000 by 80% here and that gives us an implied fair value here of corporation S for $612,500 so let's go look at the balance sheet here for corporation S uh, and we have to compare uh, determine what the fair value is for our assets and our liabilities and in this case we only have one change here in property plant and equipment equipment it's been assessed up uh, by forty thousand dollars here to its fair value at four hundred sixty thousand dollars so what we have to do here is we have to look at our total assets here I add those up here at their fair value of five hundred eighty thousand dollars plus in this transaction we also have goodwill here for hundred seventy two thousand five hundred dollars and then going over to our liabilities here uh, their fair value here is hundred forty thousand dollars so the next thing we do is we go over here and determine our fair value of our net assets that would be to five hundred eighty thousand dollars of assets less hundred forty thousand dollars of liabilities gives us four hundred and forty thousand dollars here for our net assets so going down here our implied price was six hundred twelve thousand five hundred less the fair value of our net assets of four 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 hundred forty thousand gives us goodwill here of hundred and seventy two thousand five hundred and that's what we had shown here on our balance sheet so the next thing we have to do is we have to go down and develop a distribution schedule here so looking at that the fair value of the subsidiary was six hundred twelve thousand five hundred and then the parent it would be portioned out here eighty percent to the parent four hundred ninety thousand dollars now that's the price that they paid here for the uh, cash and the stock that they issued to the sub corporation and then the non-controlling interest or the uh, sub corporation amount here would be 122,500. Now the thing we have to look at here is less the book value acquired here and that, and that was $300,000 for the common stock plus $100,000 worth of retained earnings and if we go up to the uh, balance sheet here for subcorporation S you would see that here under the stockholders equity section. So going down to our distribution schedule the total equity here is 400,000 subtract that from the fair value of the subsidiary of 612,500 and you get an excess of the fair value over the book value here of $212,500 and that's proportioned out 80% here to the parent for 170,000 and then the non-controlling interest gets 20% for uh, uh, 42,500 so looking at this excess here amount of 212,500 we can move over to our uh, adjustment accounts here and that we take taken off our uh, balance sheet here from the subsidiary here and that it, equipment was adjusted up here by forty thousand dollars and it has a life here of four, uh, of four years so the amortization per year is ten thousand dollars here and then we also had goodwill here of 172,500 and that does not get amortized so that total adjustments to our accounts here is 212,500 which matches our excess of the fair value over the book value here on our distribution schedule. All right, the next thing for our consolidation problems, we're given the balance sheet here for the subsidiary corporation and the balance sheet here for the parent corporation. And that's as of the beginning of the year uh, before the consolidation here. And then we're giving a consolidated uh, balance sheet here for both the parent and the subsidiary corporation based on the at the end of the year here. And from that, we have to determine changes here that we would have on that balance sheet here for like inventories, equipment, liabilities, and so forth. So we'll look that at, at those changes here on the uh, consolidated financial statement of cash flow. Okay, now for our consolidated statement of cash flows. First, looking at our cash flows from operating activities, we have our consolidated net income here, and that was given here at $206,400. So now, using the indirect method, we have to make some adjustments here to reconcile a net income to net cash. First, we have our depreciation expense here for $250,000, and we were given that for the parent and the subsidiary, plus the point I want to make here is this uh, 
10,000 that we've taken off those that excess schedule here. That was the excess amount that we had to amortize for the year at uh, $10,000. So we get a total amount here of 250,000 that we'd be adding back. And then we had a decrease in inventory here based on our consolidated amounts here of $11,600. We'd be adding that back. And then we had an increase here in current liabilities here uh, based on our consolidation. So we'd be adding that back. So we have our total adjustments here and subtract that from our consolidated net income and then we have the net cash provided here for operating activities at four hundred seventy eight thousand dollars so the next thing we have to do is we have to move down to our cash flows from and for investing activities here so we had a payment uh, for the purchase here of the subcorporation here of uh, three hundred and ten thousand dollars now the point I want to make here is we have to subtract out the uh, amount of cash that we received from the subsidiary on their balance sheet and that was for sixty thousand dollars so that has to be subtracted from the three hundred and ten thousand dollars so we have a net cash payment here of two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to acquire uh, the, for the parent to acquire the subcorporation S here. And then they purchased some equipment here for $152,000. So that would be a, a cash flow for investing activities here. So we have a net cash used in this case uh, for investing activities of $402,000. So the next thing we have to do is we have to move down to our cash flows for financing activities. And in this case, we had a decrease in long-term debt here based on our consolidation for $20,000. So we would uh, have that as a negative amount here. And then dividends paid by the parent corporation here of $60,000. Now we also have dividends paid here by the subcorporation S here. And that's what I point I want to make here. Uh, this uh, corporation S or the subcorporation paid $15,000 in dividends here. But the, we can only record 20% of that because... Uh, that is what they would have paid to the outside parties here since they're 80 percent owned by the parent corporation and that can't be included in uh, the dividends paid here that has to be eliminated so we got fifteen thousand times twenty percent gives us six thousand dollars worth of dividends that were paid to the out part outside parties so then we have a net cash used in financing activities of eighty six thousand dollars here so now we go up and we add up all our amounts here in our columns for the operating, investing, and financing activities. And we're going to, in this case, the amount here comes up to a net decrease in cash of $10,000 for the year. So we take the cash at the beginning of the year for $200,000, and then we have to uh, decrease it here by this amount of cash used for the year. So the net cash at the end of the year in this case would be $190,000. So the next thing we have to do is we have to have this supplemental schedule here for non-cash financing and investing activities. And we'll look at that in the next page. Okay, now for our schedule for non-cash financing investing activities, and that's a supplemental schedule that has to be included with the consolidated statement of cash flow. So let's go up and look at it here. So first item included would be the adjusted value of assets acquired, uh, $752,500, and that came off the balance sheet here for the subsidiary, the uh, fair value amount here for the total assets. That included the total assets here plus the goodwill amount. And then there was cash paid here by the parent of $300,000, ten thousand dollars for the subsidiary so adding those together you get a balance here of four hundred forty two thousand five hundred dollars and then that's broken down here between the common stock that was issued that was the parent issuing common stock here to the subsidiary for hundred eighty thousand dollars and then the liabilities assumed would be included here at hundred and forty thousand dollars and that came off the balance sheet of looking up here from the subsidiary that's what they uh, acquired here from the subsidiary as liabilities and then the we'd have to enlist, indicate the amount of the non-controlling interest here at the date of acquisition, and that was for $122,500 here. And if that we can get off our distribution schedule here. Going over our distribution schedule, the fair value of the subsidiary, the non-controlling interest got 20% of that here for $122,000. So this is a supplemental schedule, and this is what would be in, have to be included here uh, with the statement of cash flows.